I'd like to welcome everyone to Spotlight Television. This is Frank McKay, but more importantly, Carol Look is our very special guest. She is a wonderful, wonderfully accomplished life coach, a speaker, an author. And you are the creator of the Yes Code. What's the Yes Code? The Yes Code is my form of a coaching method that helps people identify where they want to go, what their blocks are, and then I help them release the blocks so they can reach those goals easily and effortlessly. People have all these goals set up for themselves and they sabotage and get in their own way. And so I help them, I help them go from A to B in a, in a wonderfully simple fashion. How long ago did you develop the code? A uh, couple of years. It's been sort of what my work has been moving towards for years. I've been in the self-help business for, I've been a psychotherapist for 25 years. And 18 of those years I've been doing more modern techniques to help people uh, release their stress and worry and release their anxiety and move forward and attract abundance in their lives. What differentiates the Yes Code from other methods that you may have used in the past or that other people have used? Uh, the Yes Code, I combine the tapping, the EFT, the tapping on the acupuncture points, and my traditional training that I had as a psychotherapist and coaching, and just my years, my decades of, of experience in helping people and seeing patterns and seeing how they sabotage and get in their own way. And it's just been a very effective way for me to help other people, a very good formula. To get I'm, them. I'm going to make an assumption that our viewers or many of our viewers don't know what emotional freedom techniques are. Yes. And so EFT for yes. short. Tell us about that. Okay. So it's meridian tapping. What we're doing is tapping on the meridian points on the face and the body. And the meridians, if we borrow from Chinese medicine, and Chinese medicine doctors believe that there is energy and electricity moving through your body through these circuits or meridians. So uh, an acupuncturist would put needles in these points to relieve your stress, relieve your pain. We tap on the same points, which sends a little message through the body. And basically what we're doing is releasing and relieving the fight or flight response. So if I have you picture something or imagine your success and you feel upset by it, you've actually triggered the fight or flight response in your brain. So the tapping calms it down so then you're no longer afraid of reaching your goal or taking your next step or doing whatever you have to do. So it's been in, incredibly effective for thousands and thousands and thousands of people. We've even done it on post-traumatic stress for veterans and for all sorts of topics. So it's very, very exciting as a, new, as a tool. I would think the tapping, the tapping is more desirable to people rather than getting poked with the, with the acupuncture. I, many people don't want needles stuck in them. Uh, many people, including myself, are not crazy about being stuck by anything sharp. The tapping method, uh, is that basically what, what uh, I don't know, triggers the usefulness of this method to, to some people? The tapping on the acupuncture points, I say to people, it's like bringing up a file on your computer. You can't edit it until you bring it up. So we have the person focus on their stress, and while they're in the stressful thought, they do the tapping on these points, and that calms them down. So the tapping on the acupuncture points is what actually gets them to move and change whatever blocks they have in their energy system. In the world of psychology, what would they, what would they call this type of, is this, uh, what, what type of method would they call this? Well, it's a self-help technique because you can do it on yourself. It's great to go to a practitioner, but people can use it on themselves. Um, energy therapy, energy medicine is what it's actually under. The title it's under now is energy medicine, energy, energy psychology. Now, do you teach people to do this? And pardon my ignorance on this, but do you teach people to do this themselves? Uh, or do you have practitioners that help them along? Both. So I teach workshops all over the world to help people learn how to do this. And I have taught lay people and nurses and doctors and psychiatrists and psychologists and, and therapists. And then I have a group of people that I teach that they become, they're the practitioners now and they go out and teach other people. And many people have taught this method around the world. It is not just me. I'm just one of the many, many practitioners out there. Well, everything I hear about you, your reputation is wonderful and, and very effective. How many people would you imagine have, have used this technique? use this technique in the world, uh, hundreds of thousands now, because it has spread because it's been so successful that people go to their doctor and say, you're not going to believe this, but I quit smoking with this tapping. And then the next person goes to the, somebody else and says, you're not going to believe this, but I got over my pain. And the next person says, I got over my sabotage. So it grows by word of mouth. And then they've been training people for 20 years in the technique. So it's really exploded. 
The Tapping Diet is one of your books. Yes. Let, let's talk about that. What, mm -hmm. what brought it on in the first place and how long ago did you write it? I wrote it last year, and the and I I had a manual for practitioners before that for 15 years. So people have known my work with addictions and with weight loss. And what's so exciting is that when you think of someone who's on a diet, what gets them in trouble? Their stress levels, their emotions, and the plateaus that are frustrating. Right? Then they start eating again. And we're not overeating because we're hungry. We are overeating because of stress and worry and anxiety and feelings we don't want to feel. And when you use the tapping, you can do it, you can target cravings. So if you have a particular craving for sugar or carbohydrates, you can target stress. You can target those times of the day when you tend to nibble too much and eat too much. And you can tap on the fears you have of losing the weight. A lot of people don't want to lose the weight and they don't want to keep it off because they feel somehow exposed or vulnerable. So all the problems with regular weight loss plans can be addressed with the tapping. So I've had incredible success with people being able to lose weight and keep it off. Anybody can lose weight, apparently. It's keeping it off that is the trouble, that is the challenge. That's always been my challenge. We have about a minute before we go to break. There was a book written in the 70s, and, and I never read it, but I, I was impressed by the title. And I think it was called, It's Not What You're Eating, It's What's Eating You. Is that still true? Yes, it is still true. And sadly, the billion dollar weight loss industry is not addressing that. You know, the next diet, before the show airs, the next diet will be out there of what foods you're supposed to eat and not eat. It's not about the food. It's about our stress levels that make us reach for food that's not good for us. It's about stress that holds on, holds weight on to the body. And it's about our inability to say no when we want to really stick to something that's good for us. We sabotage ourselves because we're afraid. We're afraid to lose the weight. We're afraid to change. We're afraid of other people's reactions. So uh, it really is what's eating us. When we come back, more with Carol Look, the creator of The Yes Code. We'll be back right after this. Nation just released its best app ever for iPhones and Androids. Get enhanced live streaming. See what's on air right now, uninterrupted. And in-depth local weather data. Plus, customize your interactive radar and weather maps. And easily upload and share your weather photos and videos. Plus more. Download the new Weather Nation app today. It's free. Weather Nation. Weather. Pure and simple. Paying way too much for cable or satellite? Sick of paying for channels you don't even watch? Want to access and control your TV services in more than just the family room? Well, Bonko TV is the answer. Bonko TV. It's 100% over the top. Bonko TV is now available on Roku, Google TV, Amazon Fire TV, as well as in the Google Play Store. Download it today for free. Change the way you watch TV and get Bonko TV today. Bonko TV. It's 100% over the top. I'd like to welcome everyone back. Our very special guest today is Carol Look. She is an author, a life coach, and she's the creator of the Yes Code. We spoke in the first segment about the Yes Code, and it's, uh, it's fascinating. Let's talk a little more about you and your history. Uh, where were you born? Where were you raised? East Coast. I'm an East Coaster. And have always been, I've been in New York now for decades. So I love it, love it on the East Coast. Growing up, what was the first time you came into contact or it even came into your mind that self-help exists? Mm -hmm. yeah. And, well, go ahead, let's start with that. Well, I would say I was born anxious. So I was always looking for ways to help myself feel better and calm down. You know, if you look at your siblings and your family, some people are more anxious, some people might lean towards depression, but I was always anxious. And so I've been getting help for myself, reading books, going to psychotherapy, and getting help for mo much of my life. And when I found, when I discovered the tapping, 
everything changed for me. I love psychotherapy, and that's how I started as an LCSW. And I loved hypnosis, which I also did for years. But when I found the tapping, a lot changed for me. What did your folks do? Uh, my father was a banker, and my mother was a homemaker. Who was the anxious one out of the two, or were they either one of them? Or uh, both of them? My mother. I would say she was her. My mother's side of the family was anxious. Is anxious. What do you think? makes people anxious as children? What makes children anxious? Is it directly the, the parents? If the parents are both calm, can we expect to have calm children? Uh, or <laughs> Apparently not always, because I've talked to people who said, hey, wait a minute, I came out anxious and my parents were okay. Um, I think as a kid, there are so many things going on. First of all, we know that you come out with a certain temperament. Then you have birth order. I was three out of four. Then you have what your parents are going through at the time that you're born. Then you have school age issues. And um, I think a, a lot goes into it as well as what you, what you inherit. So a lot goes into it. Do you think the way we're raising children now, and when I say we, I don't mean parents just, but I mean the school systems the, and, and some of the political correctness, which maybe some go overboard, but the political correctness that seem to be that seems to be working is the anti-bullying, and a lot of that mm-hmm. has, uh, I, I think, made a, a positive effect. Do you see that as being a big difference between when we grew up and and when our children are growing up? What I think is the challenge now is that kids are on their devices 24/7, so they're not having interactions as much. They're not sitting with people. They're not having quiet time. There's a television on 24/7. Or there's an iPad, or there's a there's some device somewhere. So we're not interacting in the same way. So the bull, the anti-bullying stuff has been wonderful, but I think kids are not relating. It's like you you do a very quick text instead of a lovely letter. You know, I wrote a letter to someone recently, and they said that was so unusual. You know, a thank you note. They said that was I haven't had one for years. So I think we're missing some interaction that is key for human development. That's, that's my take on it. I'm not a mother, but I have 15, 14 nieces and nephews, uh, and I've, I've seen a lot go on. Well, how do you suggest a community or even larger society combats that? I mean, it's, it, it's all electronic now. Everybody's on iPhones. Mm-hmm. We're probably uh, guilty of that and, and, and everything. How do you combat that? Well, I think what's missing for any of those issues is stress relief techniques in the school system or at home. That's what I think is missing. So I've got a lot of colleagues who are going into schools, helping them use this method, use the tapping to calm kids down. And what it does is the kids are all together. Nobody's allowed to be on a cell phone. The teacher's with them. They're using the technique to calm down, and they're able to express what's going on. They're able to say, I'm upset because I heard that this happened in another classroom, or I'm upset because my parents had a fight last night or something. And they're able to use this for stress relief because I think... Kids, and I, I was as a child also, there is so much going on. We had sports, we had choir practice, we had school, we had the dog. We, there was so, and our siblings, we have so much going on as well as what's going on with our parents that I think there's not enough downtime to really address what's going on. Nobody's asking anymore. I don't think anyone's asking, and I don't, don't think kids are getting airtime because what are they doing? They're texting or they're watching a movie that's quite violent, and I mean at quite young ages. You mentioned being anxious as a child. That anxiety, yeah. do you think today, if you were the same child, Carol, look, nowadays, would you have been diagnosed with uh, ADHD or would you have been uh, prescribed mm-hmm. Ritalin? Or if not you, what about mm-hmm. others like you or similar to you? No, because I was on that edge where I channeled it into music and sports. So I didn't get into trouble till a little bit later when I started discovering other things, food, alcohol, you know, that could help yeah. the anxiety. So I was on that borderline where I wouldn't have been diagnosed. And I wasn't ADHD. I was a very good student. So it all got channeled, but I just, I didn't really know how to calm myself down. I worried about everything. We've got about a minute left before yes. the break. When you mention alcohol and, and other people have issues with, with heavier substances and drugs and you see heroin, uh, that's a, a form, obviously, of self-medicating. Is that something that you address in your, in your workshops, in your private sessions? Always, because so many of my clients and people I know are self-medicating some way. Being on the Internet to 2 o'clock in the morning is another way to self-medicate. It doesn't have to be alcohol or drugs. Right? and relationships and drama. There's so many ways that people try to calm their feelings down. So when I found tapping as a way to calm people down, calm myself down, one of the first things I got over was long-term insomnia. Gone. 
because I did the tapping on my anxiety. See, I think, and again, we're, we're up against the break, but I, I see myself doing it with eating and food. I don't have an alcohol, mm-hmm. thank God I don't have a, an alcohol problem, I don't have a drug problem, mm-hmm. and I, but still, it's, it's still disruptive, the, uh, the eating. When we come back, I'd like to ask you how many people have that same, this nervous eating, the anxiety eating, more when we come back with Carol Look. Weather Nation hears you, and we made the website even better and easier to use. It's the 24-7 weather news you need the way you want to see it, featuring breaking weather news, current local forecasts, live streaming video, in-depth weather stories, on-demand weather news, and now it's even easier to drop your weather photos and videos on the website. Check out what's new at weathernationtv.com. Weather Nation, weather pure and simple. way too much for cable or satellite sick of paying for channels you don't even watch want to access and control your tv services in more than just the family room well bonko tv is the answer bonko tv it's 100 percent over the top bonko tv is now available on roku google tv amazon fire tv as well as in the google play store download it today for free change the way you watch tv and get bonko tv today bonko tv it's 100 percent over the top. Welcome back to Spotlight Television. This is Frank McKay. Again, more importantly, Carol Look is our very special guest, and she is an author, a life coach, and she's the creator of the Yes Code. Uh, Carol, you, you use the term sabotage quite a bit. Right before the break, I said to you that uh, as, a, as a stress reliever or self-medicating, I, I use food, and I've used it for many years, and I go back to it and everything else. Uh, is that a form of sabotage? It's a form of relieving your feelings using food, and then the effect is it will sabotage your success. So if you, whether you want to just reach a basic uh, weight goal or you want to do something else in your life, if you're using food, hating yourself for it, not liking how you fit in your clothes, etc., it has the effect of making you not like yourself. So it does. you can sabotage your diet, but then you can sabotage your success as well. I notice even when I plateau for a little while, maybe I'll turn and I'll maybe subconsciously, mm-hmm. I'll say, you know what, it's just not working, and then I'll, I'll binge Tricky. or I'll do something like that. Yeah, I mean, is this a is this a common a methodology or is this something that uh, that I'm just doing on my own? Very, very common. And what we want to look at is why do people sabotage? So sabotage could be procrastination, it could be being late, it could be breaking a diet, all of that. It could be causing conflict. And what sabotage is doing for you, it's solving a problem. And people don't know that. All they do is criticize themselves. What if you realize that sabotage was trying to solve a problem for you? So overeating is actually solving a problem for you. What's the problem? What's the upside of overeating? And everybody has their own answer. So in my case, overeating calmed me down. I, for some reason... I, I just keep thinking about relationships when you say sabotage. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not just talking uh, romantic relationships, but I'm saying friendships, yes. relationships within your family, with, with your kids or with your parents or grandparents, mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. friends. I, I see a lot of sabotage go on, yes. and people will just be going along, going along, and all of a sudden they'll, they'll bring out, and I, I guess the popular term is drama, right? They'll just create some kind of drama. Yes. Uh, is that? a form of sabotage. Yes, it is. Creating drama or conflict. And again, go back to the question, what's the upside of sabotaging the relationship? And when people get really honest, they might say, because I didn't want to go any deeper, or I was afraid of the intimacy, or I was feeling less than, so I sabotaged it. So we do sabotage for a particular outcome, even though we may not know the outcome. So instead of criticizing yourself for the sabotage, say, what possibly 
could be the upside of sabotaging myself in this relationship with success, with a diet. Why am I getting in my own way? What's it doing for me? And once you find out what it's doing for you, then I apply the tapping to that and that's what we erase and eliminate and then you're on your way. But what people are doing, criticizing themselves, oh, there I go again, oh, I'm so stupid, or I'm so something, something judgmental, and it doesn't do any good. When people come to you, and again, I'm making another assumption here, I would assume they've already admitted that there's an issue, there's a problem, so they're coming to Carol Luck to, to work this out. Is it difficult to get them to admit that they are sabotaging, or are they already ready to you know, to, to solve this and it's easy to say, hey, you're sabotaging, admit it. They usually come saying, I'm getting in my own way. So I do a lot of work with attracting success and abundance. And they say, I don't know what's wrong. I keep getting in my own way. Why did I sabotage the project at work? Why didn't I send the client the proposal that was due on Friday, whatever is going on? So they know they're sabotaging, but they don't know why. So my job is to say, what's the downside of getting your website completed? And they say, what do you mean? I'm like, well, there must be a downside or you'd be doing it. And they say, yeah, because I don't want people to reject me. And if I get my website done or my business cards done or the proposal completed, then someone can say no. So when they get that aha, then everything changes because they come out of the self-criticism mode and go into this is the issue, this is the real problem. The symptom is procrastination, right? It's not the real problem. What's the real problem? I'm afraid of failure, so I don't get it out there. I'm afraid of success, and I don't want to rock the boat, so I get in my own way. So that's what they come to me for. They usually come because they say, wow, I can't get out of my own way. Is fear of success, and this isn't a rhetorical question, I'm not married to a belief on this, but is fear of success just another way of saying fear of failure? No, I think they're quite different in the behavior if you look at them. So fear of failure, someone procrastinates or doesn't do something because they're afraid they won't get accepted when it's out there. So I use the example of the website. Someone might not write a book because they're afraid it won't get purchased. So they never write the book, right? And their excuse is, oh, I'm too busy. But they're afraid of failing. Fear of success is the person usually knows they're going to be successful and they're afraid of what their success is going to do to their relationships. We're back to relationships. So maybe they're afraid that someone's going to be jealous. Maybe they're afraid that their success will rock the boat within their friends, their group of colleagues. And they're worried, like, if my book gets... Gets, uh, gets published and yours doesn't, what are, you, are you going to be mad at me or jealous? And So fear of success is they pretty much know they're going to be successful, but they don't want to be a target. They don't want to stand out. Many people say, I don't want to be visible. I like staying under the radar. And, that's, and we find out that that's the reason they're not completing projects. They're not sending the proposals out when they need to. They're not showing up on time, whatever's going on. That's their form. That's why they're sabotaging. That's the best explanation I've ever heard of fear of success. I've asked it many, many times, but basically what you're saying is that there's consequences to success, yes. and, and you have to deal with those once, once you get to succeed. I, I asked the question almost uh, not believing that there is a fear of success, but uh, that's a, a wonderful explanation. Uh, who did you like reading growing up? Who was the first self-help mm. authors? That's interesting. Wayne Dyer, who's recently passed, right? Read all of his books. Um, I read a lot of spiritual texts that were really interesting to me. I don't come from that background, but the religious spiritual work around attracting abundance was fascinating to me. Napoleon Hill, as we talked about at the break. Um, many, many of those books are, are on my shelves that have really helped me understand that I can be empowered, I can empower myself. But sometimes you do have to go to someone else for some, a second pair of eyes, for someone to help you understand and see and, and put the flashlight in the dark corners and say, this is what's going on. This is why you sabotage. So I certainly have gotten help my whole life, and then I love, love helping other people. we got about a minute left before we have to take a break, but you have to have a certain temperament, and you have to have a certain desire to do this. It's not only being able to do it, it's being willing to do it. How soon... Did you start doing this? I mean, what, in your history, when did you start becoming a self-help guru? Well, I was in business. And when I was in business, I said to myself, after a few years, I said, this, this isn't me. I don't feel right. This is not a yes for me. And that's when I started looking around and went to graduate school to become a psychotherapist. So it was in my, in my 20s, and, uh, or late 20s. And um, the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> Carol, look, when we come back, more with Carol, look, right after this.
person theory toward a new developmental paradigm for the origin, nature, and disorder of the mind. The new book by Dr. Augustus Kinzel. It reflects decades of clinical experience, reflection, and wisdom. Person theory tries to understand how disorders of unconscious aggression inhibit personal development. This amazing new book offers a developmental model for the individual and theorizes about the evolution of the unconscious mind. Dr. David Mintz says, This is a remarkable, complex, and thoughtful effort. A daring new theoretical perspective. This book has been a life project for the author, Dr. Augustus F. Kinzel, and represents the culmination of over 35 years as a practicing psychiatrist and psychoanalyst. Get Person Theory by Dr. Augustus F. Kinzel today for only $35. Available now at ipbooks.net and draugustuskinzel.com. Person Theory by Dr. Augustus Kinzel. Available at ipbooks.net. Get your copy today. I'd like to welcome everyone back to Spotlight Television. This is Frank McKay. More importantly, Carol Look is our very special guest. Carol, if you're just joining us, is a, a wonderful life coach, and she is the creator of the Yes Code. And that's, that's fascinating, and it's something that you, when you came up with, was it a light bulb? Was it an aha moment? Was it one of those situations? Did it kind of progress over time? It, it progressed over time because what I've been doing with people is helping them identify their goals, understand what's blocking them on their path, and then releasing their conflicts about why they don't want to be successful, why they're in their own way. So I've been doing that for years, and then having the title and the umbrella title of the Yes Code, I help people find their next yes, because you know what we're doing. We're doing what you want me to do. We're doing what our parents want us to do. We're doing what our friends suggest. And we're not going inside and listening to our own gut. And so that's what I help people do is clear out the noise and the static that's there all the time. That's the little monkey mind, as we call it. And getting clear enough and quiet enough to say, yes, what's good for me? What do I need to say yes? Like the project, like coming to do this with you was a yes right away. Right? But I had, I had to be quiet enough to go inside and get that answer and not have all the static distract me. Let's differentiate between how you use the term clear and how like you know, religions, Scientology, for example, uses mm -hmm. clear. Now, you're not a Scientologist, no. and this has nothing to do with Scientology. No. But, but the term clear, I, d just define it. For me, the power of clarity is knowing your internal yes and your internal no, so you know what step to take in your personal life as well as your professional life. So it's just clarity. It's clarity of emotions and clarity of decisions. That's all it means. And a lot of people in the self-help and coaching world use it in, in that way. A lot of the folks that come to you, is, is that part of the, the issue? They, they know there's a problem, but they're not clear. There's no clarity on what that problem is or what the cause of the problem is. They often know what the problem is, they're not sure about the cause, and what the problem is doing for them is blocking them from taking their next steps. So what I help them do is get clear on, is, are you doing that for the wrong reason or the right reason? What's your next step, professionally as well as personally? So I help them quiet down their mind. I use the tapping to undo any conflict they might have. Maybe they have fear of success. Maybe they're afraid that their friends are going to be upset if they lose the weight and their friends are still struggling with it. Right? Maybe they have fear of failure. So I help them reduce that stress around the conflict, emotional conflict. So whether they know where it came from or not, sometimes we never find out where it came from. But I help them move forward on their way to success. I'm sure this is a difficult question, or maybe it's not. Can you quantify what the problems are? Like, for example, 80% of the times mm -hmm. my clients have a problem with this, or 30% of the times, or half the time. Can you quantify it like that, or? Not really. I would say 100% of my clients sabotage themselves, and they either fall into fear of success or fear of failure. That's what I would say, but I, I, other than that. Well, that, I, I think that's quantifying. I mean, 100% of your folks Come because they want to get better. They want to get help. They're, do, they're getting in their own way. And they say, what is the matter with me? I know what steps to take, but I've sabotaged yet another relationship, a professional connection, or my diet, or my smoking, or you know, my financial issues. They've, they've gotten in their own way. So they know they're sabotaging, and they, they finally admit, I, I've got to get extra help. I need coaching. I need help. I need support. I, I mean, if you're going to put this in a nutshell, or you're going to sum it all up. We're, we're sabotaging. If we're not getting the result that we want, 
we're doing something to sabotage ourselves. Yes. If I'm overeating, which I which I do, overeat, and when I uh, when I don't maintain weight, it's something I'm doing to sabotage. And I, I mean that's yes. that's that's pretty interesting. I, I guess if you're not sabotaging, you're perfect. And I don't know that many people are perfect. Never, never, never met any of them. I, I mean, how many people mm -hmm. out there would you would you say would de would benefit from the tapping method? I don't know anybody that I've ever met in my life who wouldn't benefit because it's a stress relief technique. So it started as an anxiety relief self help technique. And then we've done it for everything from cravings to success issues to relationship issues to post-traumatic stress. Anything you could imagine, we can use the tapping on because it clears out any conflicts in what the Chinese medicine doctors believe is this energy, energetic circuitry in your body that clears out, so we clear out the problem. So whether you're sabotaging yourself in finances or sabotaging by procrastinating at work or rebelling against your boss or you're not being a good enough parent because you know you're getting in your own way, whatever's going on, we can tap to help you calm down, see the problem for what it is, help your family, help your business, and move forward. Where did the term tapping come from? I mean, I understand it's that, but is it is it something that you coined, or is it no, something no. that's been around for thousands? Of uh, no, just 30 years. 30 uh, years. About 30 years ago, Roger Callahan, a doctor who uh, recently passed, he was a psychologist, and he started the tapping method. And then someone else came along and simplified it and did a version that we all could do rather than just psychotherapists. And so they used tapping instead of the needles on the acupuncture points, and that's where it was coined. When we come back, and we have about a minute left, when we come back, maybe we could get you to demonstrate uh, the tapping. Uh, when was the first time you, you came across this, and when was the first time you, you actually um, performed it? 1997, my first class, my first workshop, and I was as skeptical as anyone you can imagine, and it started working on my clients, and it started working on me, and that's all I needed to take it as a tool in my toolbox for my psychotherapy practice. Were you surprised something like this was so effective and out there and you just had, you'd never heard of it before Yes, that? someone in my hypnosis class said, you think hypnosis is fun, you've got to try this weird new tapping method called EFT. And that's how I got into the first workshop. Carol Look, and more with Carol Look when we get back after this. Uh, Carol, again, is a life coach. She's an author, she's a speaker, and she's the creator of the Yes Code. We'll be back right after this. paying way too much for cable or satellite? Sick of paying for channels you don't even watch? Want to access and control your TV services in more than just the family room? Well, Bonko TV is the answer. Bonko TV. It's 100% over the top. Bonko TV is now available on Roku, Google TV, Amazon Fire TV, as well as in the Google Play Store. Download it today for free. Change the way you watch TV and get Bonko TV today. Bonko TV. It's 100% over the top. Weather Nation hears you, and we made the website even better and easier to use. It's the 24-7 weather news you need, the way you want to see it. Featuring breaking weather news, current local forecasts, live streaming video, in-depth weather stories, on-demand weather news, and now it's even easier to drop your weather photos and videos on the website. Check out what's new at weathernationtv.com. Weather Nation. Weather, pure and simple. Welcome back to Spotlight Television. Again, our very special guest is Carol Look. She is the creator of the Yes Code and, and so much more, author of, of many fine books. How many books total? Five, I think I'm up to. <laughs> wow, five books. Do you have a methodology that you stick with, or does it come out in different ways? In other words, do you sit in front of the computer? Do you longhand? What? First, I have to be really inspired. I have to really feel excited about it, and then I do that I word process and get all the chapters put together. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Do you 
pattern your, your self-help targeting or your, your methodology of self-help after anybody in particular? You mentioned Dr. Wayne uh, Dwyer, uh, mm -hmm. Dyer, I'm sorry, and... No, not after anyone. It's really my client base for 25 years. What have they needed? What have I needed? So it's really my clinical as well as my personal experience. What are people asking for? What are they looking for? I know this technique works so easily and so well for people that if I could write it out for them and tell them what to do, then they go and spend 10 minutes a day doing the tapping and their lives change. I know that now. I, I can say after years and years of doing this, people come back to me and say, wow, that was life changing and it's been life changing for me. Speaking for myself, I can't speak for all of our viewers, but I always say I'm thrilled with my life, but if I could be thinner and richer, a little thinner and a little richer, it would, it would be a nice thing. And I have to believe that a lot of people feel that same way. A lot of people that feel good about how things are going. Mm -hmm. As far as the food goes, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, for the last mm -hmm. 12 years, I, 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 haven't, uh, I haven't been able to uh, maintain weight, and when I, a, a healthy <clears throat> weight, I should say. And when I get to a certain point, I find myself sabotaging. What would you suggest? So my favorite question is, what is the downside for you of reaching that goal and staying there? Because something's going on. When you get there, you go back up. Something is happening. There's a conflict. So if you could ask yourself, what's the downside of staying there? I think you could come up with the reason. So first, I think food is a great stress reliever, temporary, and it gets us in trouble, but it does relieve stress. So you've got to find another way to relieve your stress and find a way, why are you uncomfortable when you reach your goal? You do all that work and you reach there, you get there, and then you go back up. So something's going on in your mind and your body that says, I'd rather go back up than stay where I am after all the work you've done. So to find out the sabotage, what's the upside of staying where you are or the downside of reaching your goal? What's the usual answer to that question? What's the downside? For different problems. So for weight loss, many people will say, you know, if I get there and I'm not happy, then what? Like they're worried about actually reaching their goal. Other people say, I don't like to be visible and I'd feel exposed and I feel more comfortable with having extra weight around. There's so many answers. You know, for financial issues, people say, I'm afraid of success if I get there. So the downside of reaching my goal and being very financially successful is somebody's going to ask me for money and I'm not going to be able to say no. Or someone's going to be jealous and upset with me for being so successful and I'm going to be uncomfortable. So it's a different answer depending, depending on the problem. And of course, everybody has their own personalized reasons for getting in their own way and procrastinating or sabotaging. Well, I think anyone who has ever lost weight or anyone who has ever tried to lose weight and did any bit of research, they, they figure that it's, it, it's basically science, right? I mean, if you take in less calories than you burn off, you'll lose. If you take in more calories than you, uh, than you take in, you'll, uh, I mean, than you burn off, you'll gain. And all of us know that. I mean, but if you wrote a, a self-help book mm -hmm. and on the first page you just put that Nobody's going to read beyond that, right? So again, it comes to the, the blocking, it comes to the, the sabotage, it comes to, uh, to everything else. So and, and, the, and the stress. So in 2001, my father-in-law died, three months later was 9-11, and three months later my younger sister died of cancer. I gained 15 pounds in four months. That's a lot of weight on me, right? And it was because no matter what I was doing at the time, it was so agitating. All those things were completely new for me. Right? And I was using food, not too much, but enough right, to gain that. You don't have to eat that much more, unfortunately, to gain that much weight. right? Yeah. So I was using food, an extra dessert, an extra piece of bread, an extra this every single day for four or five months. And the weight just came back on. That's how it happens. right? Because I was, I was beside myself with grief. That's what I would say. And 9-11, you're a New Yorker. You know what that did to all yeah. of us. We could not put it in a frame. We did not know what to do. People came to me to get help for it. And it was beyond anything we've ever heard on television you know, the stories I was hearing. So it was just too much for my system, too much. So then it didn't take too long to figure it out and come back down, but it was, that was how I reacted. That's how I responded. It's so cheap to get fat also. I mean, you could just go to any gas station and there's more food in there than, than you know, uh, finest restaurants in, the, in some third world countries. I, I mean, you have more food available for a cheaper price. You can go to McDonald's and, and get uh, you know, 99 cent deals and you could get fat and you can survive yes. by being that. So it, it really is, it is part of that. And again, in the next segment, we keep saying in the next segment, uh, I'm going to ask you to demonstrate mm -hmm. the, uh, the tapping method. We've got about a minute left here. You 
you mentioned 9-11 and you mentioned uh, traumatic situations. When something like 9-11 happens, and there really is nothing else like 9-11, right? When something at that, uh, that large mm-hmm. happens, do you find that people that were around it have the same issues of dealing with it? Or does it just bring out the, let's say, the worst of, of our fears or the worst of our problems because of something so dramatic? Brings out, the, brings out the deepest fears, the deepest conflicts, and our deepest grief. So that even, if peop- even for the people who didn't lose anyone, they felt grief as well. So the other question is, if you weren't eating, if you weren't overeating, what would you feel? And in my case, I would feel so much grief, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. So with grief is a process. And part of that grief was 9-11, but my father-in-law and my sister were on either side. So I had to deal with the grief so deeply that I wasn't using food to anesthetize my feelings. So everybody has a different issue, a different answer, and everybody goes to a different level depending on their stress and where they are in their life. Creator of the Yes Code, author, speaker, life coach, Carol Look will be our guest right after this. We've got one more segment with Carol, and we'll see you right after this. Tired of paying way too much for cable or satellite? Sick of paying for channels you don't even watch? Want to access and control your TV services in more than just the family room? Well, Bonko TV is the answer. Bonko TV. It's 100% over the top. Bonko TV is now available on Roku, Google TV, Amazon Fire TV, as well as in the Google Play Store. Download it today for free. Change the way you watch TV and get Bonko TV today. Bonko TV. It's 100% over the top. Weather Nation hears you, and we made the website even better and easier to use. It's the 24-7 weather news you need, the way you want to see it, featuring breaking weather news, current local forecasts, live streaming video, in-depth weather stories, on-demand weather news, and now it's even easier to drop your weather photos and videos on the website. Check out what's new at weathernationtv.com. Weather Nation, weather pure and simple. to welcome everyone back for our final segment with Carol Look on Spotlight Television. This is Frank McKay, but more importantly, Carol Look is a wonderful self-help author. You don't mind that term, right? No. Life coach and the creator of the Yes Code. And the, the Yes Code is, is just is so fascinating, but the tapping. I'm going to ask yes. you, and we've been talking about yes. this off camera and off yes. mic, what the Yes Code, I'm sorry, what the tapping method could do for people. What can you tell us here and what can you show us here that can affect maybe when I'm talking about sabotaging with food instead of me reaching for that tapping? So let's, with tapping, with EFT, you need to have a very clear target and a target needs to be an emotion or it could be a symptom or it could be a memory of an event. So in our case, let's choose an emotion. Right? And everybody can benefit from stress relief. I don't think there's a single person watching who wouldn't say, oh, I could use a little extra help with stress relief. And what we do is we tap on the acupuncture points and we focus on what the conflict is. And some people say, but I don't want to focus on the conflict. Well, you're focusing on it all the time in your mind anyway. So we do want to focus. Remember I said, bring up the file so we can edit it. So we bring up the file. So we start here, we tap here, and we say, whatever the problem is, even though I have this stress that makes me overeat, I deeply and completely accept myself while we're tapping here. And people say, oh, I don't really accept myself. That's the problem. You are in a fight with yourself, and that creates stress and tension in your body and mind, which makes you reach for whatever you reach for. You reach for food. Somebody else reaches for sabotage in their relationships. Somebody else procrastinates and watches too much TV, right? So we say, even though I have this fill-in-the-blank, whatever it is, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. 
I've done it with Wall Streeters downtown. You know, I've done it with ev people from every walk of life. And once they get over that it sounds a little corny, then they understand that they've been fighting themselves and that's part of the problem. It's part of why we're not getting to where we want to go. We are in conflict with ourselves. We have a part of us that wants success, a part of us that wants to reach the goal, the goal weight, and the other part says, no, I don't want to go there. So we start there, even though I have this stress that's making me overeat. I deeply and completely accept myself. Then we tap two fingers of your dominant hand and we tap on different points. So these are all, uh, these all mirror acupuncture points. So the first point is here. And what you would say when you're tapping on the face and body is you just say the target. So our target is I'm really stressed out, so I overeat. So we'd say, I feel so much stress in my life. I feel so much stress, I want to overeat. I feel so much stress, I have these cravings. I feel so much stress. I really want to eat. I have all this stress in my life and I really want to eat. I have all this stress and it makes me want to sabotage myself. And the next point is under the one of the arms. I have all this stress and it makes me want to sabotage. I have all this stress. And then you take a breath and it's that simple. And what you do beforehand is you say, if I asked you, Frank, to measure your stress, stress levels right now, I'd say, go into your body. How stressed out do you feel right now? No, not so bad. Okay, what about when you think about being at home near chocolate, near popcorn, near something when you're stressed out and you have a big project due, how do you feel? And you might say, on a scale of zero to 10, you might say, I'm an eight or a nine. Then we go tap, tap, tap. Then you go back and, and test it again. So this is what I do with success. I say to people, picture yourself out on the big stage. Picture yourself with your book being published. Picture yourself whatever success means to you. And they go, whoa. I'm really nervous, I'm really anxious. That's what we do the tapping on. And then when the fear, because when the fear is high, you are not gonna change your behavior. And this is what people do. They keep trying to change their behavior. They keep trying to clean up the clutter. Two weeks later, what, what's happened on the desk, right? It's a mess. They try to do the diet by food instead of the emotional route. What happens two weeks, four weeks, six weeks later, they're eating again, right? So we have to change the emotions and the energy or the behavior will not change. I noticed that you were physically tapping fairly hard. Uh, no, not too hard. But no. is, is there a, uh, it, is it the distraction of this? No. Is, it, is it the specific points? Do we have to know where these points are? Yes. So the points correspond with the acupuncture points that a doctor would put a needle in for an acupuncture session. It's not a distraction. If we could distract, are you kidding? We, you and I would be gazillionaires working on distraction yeah. methods for people. So we're tapping on the acupuncture points, which is what calms down that fight or flight response, the stress response in the brain. When you think of the feeling, let's say in your case, you might be thinking of a feeling that you don't want to feel some kind of stress or agitation. So you reach for food. That's what millions of people are doing out there. Somebody else is afraid of success. So what they do is they think of, oh, I want to get the book published or I want to be out on stage or I want to do some project. And that makes them so anxious. They're not even aware of it. They never make the phone call. They don't follow up with the business person that's been sent to them. That's a possible referral. This is a, it's a physical thing. I mean, this is this physical and just emotional, a, right? It's not a, it's not a distraction. It's not a diversion. No. It's a, it's a physical, much like uh, acupuncture. Yes. But you must be focused on the issue. So you bring that file up in your mind or else it won't be effective. So sometimes people say, Oh, I was tapping while I was watching TV. Well, if the TV is upsetting, that's fine, but you need to be focused on your issue in order to tune in and tap and release or relieve the anxiety or stress that you're going through. Are you recommending to do it in quiet or you recommend? Yeah. Quiet. Pay quiet. attention to yourself. Pay attention to your emotions. Go ahead and tap for five minutes before you eat a meal. You will completely enjoy the meal differently. You will not overeat, right? You can do it, do it for anything. So the success issues, the abundance issues, relationship issues, and certainly for the tapping diet. Are you also suggesting a time period that it should take? I mean, can people rush through it? Can people... I mean, I, I know people that, that are busy are going to say, I don't have time to sit there for 10 right. minutes and tap. How long does it take? So it takes about a minute, right? 30 seconds to 60 seconds to do one round, but you've got to be focused and you have to keep following yourself. Did my number go down? Am I less anxious when I think of my success? Am I less anxious when I think of feeling my feelings? You have to track it, right? If you did five or 10 minutes a day of tapping, your life would completely change. And when someone comes to me and says, 
I don't have 10 minutes a day to do tapping. I say we have other issues. We have other problems to deal with because if yeah. you will not take 10 minutes a day for yourself with a technique that has helped thousands and thousands of people, you are sabotaging right then and there. And I've had people say that, oh, I didn't do my homework this week. I said, I asked you to do 10 minutes a day. What do you think it means? Oh, I'm just too busy. What else might it mean besides that you're too busy to do work on yourself that would change your life? People can get your books, yes. right, and, and study the methods in your books. People can come see you personally. What about people that are watching us that are in far off lands mm -hmm. uh, and not on the East Coast? Mm -hmm. What about folks like that? Do you do video conferencing or something? I do video conferencing, but I have programs now, a coaching program for a level one, two, and three coaching program where people can just get help for themselves. I assign them to one of my top coaches in the world, and I do the group work, which is a lot of fun. And it's only one method that you target at each of your issues. So people say, well, do you have to change it around? You change the wording, but the tapping on the acupuncture points is the method. And what you get to is the emotional conflict that's blocking your success professionally or personally. Carol, look, you've been a great guest and you are an amazing, uh, you have an amazing way of laying this out. And I think you've got a client in me. Thank you, Frank, Carol, very much. Carol, look, has been our very special guest and she's the author of a couple of wonderful, few, five wonderful books. And you can see her as a life coach. She is a public speaker. If you get an opportunity to go to one of her workshops, please do so. I want to thank all of you for tuning in to Spotlight Television. Carol Look has been our very special guest. We'll see you next time on Spotlight Television. Person Theory. Toward a new developmental paradigm for the origin, nature, and disorder of the mind. The new book by Dr. Augustus Kinzel. It reflects decades of clinical experience, reflection, and wisdom. Person Theory tries to understand how disorders of unconscious aggression inhibit personal development. This amazing new book offers a developmental model for the individual and theorizes about the evolution of the unconscious mind. Dr. David Mint says, This is a remarkable, complex, and thoughtful... Weather Nation hears you, and we made the website even better and easier to use. It's the 24-7 weather news you need, the way you want to see it. Featuring breaking weather news current local forecasts, live streaming video, in-depth weather stories, on-demand weather news, and now it's even easier to drop your weather photos and videos on the website. Check out what's new at weathernationtv.com. Weather Nation, weather pure and simple.